Moon Flute is one of, if not the best blue mage spell. And the thing is, it's easier to obtain than many of its peers, as all you need to do is complete 10 stages of the mass carnival. But that can be a bit intimidating for new blue mages, as there's this idea that you need a lot of spells to take on the carnival, but that isn't really true, especially if you're just trying to get Moon Flute, as the first 10 stages can be done rather easily without ever having to step into a dungeon trial or raid. In fact, all you need is a few overworld spells from ARR. After that, it's just a question of doing the fights. And with that being said, let's go over the first 10 stages of the Mass Carnival so you can finally unlock one of the key Blue Mage spells. Starting off with stage one, this fight should take you all of five seconds as all you need to do is the self-destruct combo of Toad Oil, Bristle, and of course, self-destruct. This should KO all three enemies along with yourself, but that doesn't matter as it will still count as you completing the stage. Keep this little self-destruct final sting trick in mind going forward as as long as you're in the final act of a stage, you'll get the victory. Speaking of which, stage two is going to be our first multi-act stage, meaning that we have two separate encounters that we have to deal with. Stage two also introduces elemental weaknesses and resistances, but you don't really need to worry about that too much. For the first act, the goal is simply AOE the enemies down using Planescracker. After you've dealt with the flans, you move on to the last act, which is just another set with different resistances. Unfortunately, these flans are a bit tankier than the enemies in stage one, meaning we need to drop them to about 70% before we do the self-destruct combo. And you have to make sure to switch to Firebomb as one of the flans resists Planescracker. Once you get them low enough, just do the combo and you've completed the stage. Stage three is another one act stage that mostly focuses on teaching you how to interrupt. The first half of the fight, you simply want to dodge the telegraphed AOEs and make sure to use Water Cannon to take advantage of his water weakness. Eventually, he'll start casting Earthen Heart and or Obliterate. Make sure to use Flying Sardine to interrupt these casts and just DPS him down until you clear the stage. Stage four has two acts, with the first again just being normal enemies you need to AOE down. Toad Oil is recommended for a bit of extra tank and be ready to cast Fight Wind if you drop below half. The second act is very similar to stage three with the main exception being that his attacks come out much faster. And when he starts casting the attacks that can be interrupted, he'll also summon some adds. However, the adds are weak to earth, so if you're using Planescracker, they'll be AoE down with relatively little effort. You also wanna make sure to interrupt his Magitek attacks with either Sardine or Bad Breath. After that, it's just DPS him down until the stage is finished. For stage 5, you're supposed to use an insta-kill spell to KO the enemies because they take almost no damage because of their buffs. Thankfully, 1000 Needles doesn't care about their buffs, so just spam it until you complete the stage. Stage 6 is our first gimmick stage, with the gimmick being intentionally blinding yourself to dodge sight attacks. So the first thing you want to do in both acts is aggro the Mandragora and stand in their AoE. This will inflict you with blind, meaning you are immune to all sight attacks. After that, it's just a question of AoEing all the enemies down until you complete the stage. Stage 7 is another gimmick fight, this one revolving around sticky tongue and exploding enemies. Act 1 is is just there to teach you that these slimes explode damaging other enemies and act two is where you actually have to start dealing with the gimmick you're gonna have four slimes in the middle and four sprites at each corner what you want to do is go north or south and pull a group of slimes and a group of sprites together detonate them and then run to the other side to do the same thing Act 3 is much of the same, except this time there are 6 slimes and 2 tower enemies. You want to pull each group of 3 slimes to their corresponding tower and then detonate them. However, you also want to be careful as when you aggro the towers, it will start to do a cast that if you don't line of sight, will kill you. You also have to make sure to line of sight the towers when they die as they release a AoE that again will kill you. Do this on one side and then repeat it on the other to complete the stage. Stage 8 is a pseudo gimmick fight, with Act 1 being there to teach you that the bombs will chain their explosions. As for Act 2, you're going to be using the mini bombs to help KO the mother bomb. You want to make sure before you detonate the first set that you actually aggro her, because otherwise she'll start to regenerate the damage that's been done. You also have to make sure to stagger the explosions as she'll gain a resistance immediately after, so wait a few seconds before detonating the other bombs. If you've done all three sets correctly, then the mother bomb should be left with roughly 40% HP, and the only thing left to do is to burst her down. Now, be very careful as she will do an attack called burst that does need to be interrupted with either flying sardine or bad breath. Stage 9 is a return to normal encounters, being yet another flan enemy. This is a relatively simple encounter. You just want to pull the enemy to the edge of the arena as they will drop lingering AoEs and make sure to interrupt their golden tongue ability as this will increase the magic damage they do. 
throughout the fight, Ad Flans are going to spot, just AoE them down, and that's essentially it. Just keep rotating around the arena until you KO the main Flan. And our last stage is 10, and this is basically just stage 3 again. All you have to do is dodge telegraphs and make sure to interrupt King's Will. In fact, interrupting that attack is the only thing you need to worry about with this stage, as it gives him a massive damage increase. So as long as you never allow King's Will to go off, this fight is just a tank and spank. And with that very simple ending, you should now have the 10 stages necessary to obtain Moonflute from the Totem Vendor. And now that you have Moonflute, you also have access to one of the strongest Blue Mage combos, the Final Sting combo, which helps a lot when it comes to the Moogle Tombstone event and makes doing the remaining stages significantly easier and faster. If you're still here, thank you for watching. Consider checking out one of my other videos at the side here. Possibly one of them is going to be the remaining mass carnivals. And if you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching. Glad it helped. And I'll see you next time.